Operating room. Good afternoon, Path Clinic. Just a moment, please. I'll see. Who is it? The aviator. Well, get him out of here, quick. You won't be talking so smart when Crespi's around. Please, please, lady. Can you tell me something now? Nothing yet. No. Maybe in five minutes. Cinco minutos. Five minutes. Five minutes. Cinco minutos. Cinco minutos. Sempre cinco minutos. Extension 26. Hello. How's the little woman? You shouldn't call so often. How about tonight? I think it'll be all right. Lady. No. Still nothing. Maybe in five minutes. Five minutes? All the time you say five minutes. That's the past of five minutes. I'm sorry, you'll have to call a public hospital. Dr. Crespi never accepts cases unless recommended by a physician. Good afternoon. Yes, Dr. Thomas. May I see Dr. Crespi? Just a moment, Doctor. I'll find out. Yes? Patient in room 605 is leaving this afternoon. I thought you'd like to make your customary call. There's been little trouble with Dr. Fields' appendicitis case, but the patient is resting easy again. If Dr. Fields would be more careful, we could avoid these unpleasant incidents. The Italian lady, D'Angelo, in Ward 3 came in with five. Five? Is that all? No, uh, Dr. Thomas is waiting to speak to you. Send them in and have some flowers sent to Mrs. Angelo with my compliments. She deserves more. Don't you think that's a little bit too generous, Dr. Crespi? Good afternoon, sir. I'd like to talk to you about the patient in room 310. Yes? He passed away. That's too bad. I thought he'd pull through. Will you make out the certificate? What time? I think 3.45. You think? 
I wonder. Dr. Thomas, please. Let's understand each other once and for all. I don't pay you to think. I pay you to know. I wish to be more thorough. This isn't anything to think about. A person is dead or he's not. If he's dead, he died at a definite time. And that time is important. Yes, sir. I'll fill in 345 as you suggest, but in the future I must insist on the exact record. Miss Gordon speaking. Yes, he's still here. What? I should say I will tell him. Quintuplet. Excuse me. What's the matter for you people? All the time of five minutes. Quintuplet. Please, sir, please, do not call me name. I'm a gentleman, please. One, two, three, four, five. You have five bambinos. Five? Cinque bambinos? Oh, poor man. Cinque bambino. Oh, mamma mia, che c'è? Mamma mia, che c'è? Cinque bambino. Little man, you had a busy day. Mrs. Roth, I'll find out. Dr. Stephen Ross. Too bad. Cresby? Dr. Cresby, Mrs. Ross is calling on the outside phone. Who? Mrs. Ross? Tell her you can't locate me. Yeah. Sorry, Mrs. Ross. I've tried every place and I can't locate him. No, I can't. Oh, I was afraid he wouldn't talk to me. Too bad. Dr. Crespi is one of very few men, perhaps the only man who can save him. Oh, but Dr. K, isn't, isn't there someone else we could get? Perhaps. Mrs. Ross hasn't been able to talk to Dr. Crespi. Oh, that's too bad. There's a time element that makes delay dangerous. Perhaps we'd better see about getting him into medical center. Oh, no, please. Please let me try once more. If I could only talk to him, I, I know he'd do it. He must. Oh, hello. Good afternoon, Mrs. Ross. Is Dr. Crespi in his office? Just a moment. I, I'll see. I don't want to see her. Yes, but what shall I tell her, Doctor? Please tell Mrs. Ross that uh, I'm in consultation. Oh, please, Andre. Don't think I'm terrible coming here, Andre. Perfectly all right. You're always welcome. Well, I wouldn't bother you, Andre. But it's so dreadfully important. Oh, no, Stella. It can't be that important. You look almost tragic. Oh, it is tragic. Oh, I need your help, Andre. What is it? You know I'll do anything if it's humanly possible. Well, it's about Stephen. Stephen? Why come to me about Stephen? Oh, he's hurt. Dreadfully hurt. Our car skidded last night on the drive. Oh, I'm afraid he may... They say he may die. I hope not, for your sake, Estelle. Don't you think you could have spared me that visit? After all, there are many competent physicians in this town. You might have gone to one of them. Oh, but that's just it, Andre. I, I couldn't. 
They wouldn't let me. See, after the smash-up, we, we drove home in a taxi. And then, then his head started bothering him. So we called in Dr. K, and then Dr. Frank, and well, two other men from the Lennox. And they all agree you're the only one who can help him. Oh, please, Andre. Try to understand. You're the only one who can save him. Why can't you forgive and forget? <laughs> forgive, forget, understand. I do understand, perhaps too well. I understand how he turned you away from me after I've treated him like one with a brother. I understand how he made love to you right under my eyes. Oh, but what's wrong with that, Andre? It was all so honest. And we've been so happy together. Oh, I've explained to you a thousand times. Stephen never knew you cared for me in that way. Can't you understand? I, I could never tell anybody. Not even now. Oh, Stephen never dreamed you wanted to marry me. Oh, please, Andre. You're the only one who can save him. Oh, you must do this for, for me and... And for Jane. Oh, Andre, please. Please, you. Get me Dr. K at the Lennox, please. Lennox Hospital? Dr. K, please. Dr. Crespi's office calling. Kate? This is Crespi. How are you? Mrs. Ross is in my office. I'm calling... Find out the details about Ross. Hmm. Plot? Yeah. Well, if you think so, okay. I'll have him brought in right away. I'll see you later. Come back. Dr. Thomas. Thomas? Crespi. We're bringing in an emergency case right away. Where's he now? Just a minute, please. I'm trying to find out. At home. Send the ambulance to 1214 South Franklin. Have you got that? At once, for Dr. Stephen Ross. No! You are to bring him here in the ambulance. Is that clear? I want this to succeed for your sake, Estelle. Oh, dear Andre. I knew you would. Will you excuse me? I have a lot to do and very little time to do it then. Will you wait in the corridor? Dear friend, my very dear friend. Why can't you forget and forgive? Forget and forgive. Forget.
I, uh, I merely stopped in to say that... Please, Dr. Thomas, in the future, have the courtesy to announce yourself. I'm sorry I presumed. Has Dr. Ross arrived? He was brought to 408. Dr. Arnold was in the receiving room. Well, let's have a look. Hello? Oh, Dr. K, I've been trying to get you for some time. Dr. Crespi has made a diagnosis and is operating on Dr. Ross immediately. Yes, Dr. Frank is with him. Yes, Doctor. Yes, that's all. Good oh, gosh, I wish the old man had given me a chance at a tree finding. Darn funny business. What? Oh, nothing. What's eating you now? Crespi operating on Ross. Well, what about it? They've been pals for years. I know, that's what makes it so odd. Oh, you're crazy. Ross is pretty badly hurt. It's the most natural thing in the world for Crespi to put him together again. Gosh, it's just the kind of a job I'd like to do. You know, a good tree-finding job would establish me. It's decent of Crespi, though. It's what you'd expect for him to do for a friend. Maybe so. But a man like Crespi doesn't forget so easily. Especially if there's a woman in the case. Especially if the woman happens to be Estelle Gorham Ross. Oh, don't be a fool. Even. And don't worry. Everything will be all right. Well, I... Don't talk, please. You need all your strength in there. Miss you, I'll do my very best. Don't worry. Thank you, Andre. I've been watching you operate for years, but this is the finest job you've ever done, Dr. Crespi. Thanks. Well, I promised you he would come through. He did. In a few weeks, it'll be better than ever. Oh, I... I wish I could express what I feel, but... Oh. But you better run along now and get some fresh air. Oh. There is nothing we can do. When may I see him? Oh, about a half an hour. I'd, uh, I'd like you to take a letter for me, if you don't mind. Do you think Crespi in mind? Just a moment. Dr. Arnold, I'll see. But 
I still think you are darn nice. And I like you. Thanks. I like you, too, when you behave yourself. What about that letter? Oh, you'll have to make that up yourself. Oh, all right. Then you take a letter. Yes, ma'am. To whom? Um, to the American Medical Association at large. To all the doctors in the world in particular. Uh, gentlemen, and those who are just doctors, like Dr. Thomas. Uh, your petitioner sets forth that Dr. John Arnold, the most competent physician in the world, that he has the nicest way of laughing with his eyes and crinkling his nose, that he should be chief surgeon at the Taft Clinic because... Want to get me fired? But, John, it is so. Oh, I'll have to beat it now. The boyfriend will begin to suspect something. Dr. Crespi? Who? Fields? Yeah. Dr. Ross? What's his pulse? I'll be up in a minute. Uh, is Dr. Crespi coming? Yes, Doctor. I called him. That'll help a great deal. If you need me, call me. Dr. Crespi. I can't make it out, sir. Hardly any respiration, pulse, or heart action.
I'm sorry, I stopped. Eight o'clock. Uh, Miss Rexford, uh, could you do me a favor? Of course, Doctor. Uh, I'd like you to accompany Mrs. Ross home tonight. She's in great trouble and all alone. You know, we just lo lost Dr. Ross. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll do anything you wish me to. Thanks. I'm quite sure she'll need you. Don't forget, uh, before you leave, have Miss Gordon relieve you. Yes, Doctor. <laughs> I've asked Miss Rexford to drive home with you tonight. Now, please, as a physician, I believe that you need her. Is there anything I can do? No. Just see that Dr. Ross is put downstairs. Will you make out the death certificate before you leave? Check the time, please. 6.15. Quite right. Will there be anything else tonight? Come now, Miss Rexford will put you to bed at... Way past your bedtime. Come kiss me goodnight. Good night. Come on, darling. Oh, come on, Marcel. You'll have to pull yourself together. This sort of thing won't do you any good. And I still feel the same way about things. I think you ought to get away. Go out of town. Your mother's place would be the best. You think I should? It's perhaps you're right. I'll go right after... <laughs> and please, Estelle... Don't worry about the arrangement. I'll attend to everything. You can rely on me. Come on, gotta get some sleep now. It's quite late.
Hello, Stephen, my friend, my dear friend, my dead friend. No, you are not dead, are you? Despite the fact that I signed your death certificate hours ago, they just think you're dead. But we know different, don't we, Stephen? You see, the potency of this uh, drug lasts only for about uh, 24 hours. You're just coming out of it. Now then, that's better. That'll keep you quiet for another 24 hours. Your eyes are open and you can see. You can hear everything. Yes, and you can feel. But you can't make the slightest sound, and you can't move an eyelash. And here you lie, helpless, paralyzed, unable to shield yourself. And you wonder why. I'll tell you. You've made me suffer for five long years by marrying Estelle. And you can't laugh at me the way you did when I begged you to let Estelle alone? Yes, I never forgot that laugh. You didn't think I could be serious when I told you that I loved Estelle. And then you married her. And ever since then, I hoped and prayed for the chance to pay you back someday with compound interest. I have something to tell you. Well, if you promise to let me come back in a half hour, Dr. Crespi gave her some sleeping powder, so I know she won't wake up right away. All right, ten minutes, then. Downstairs. This is the second time you broke our date, and it's always Dr. Crespi. Well, there you go again. Dr. Crespi this, and Dr. Crespi that. Why, I have to phone all over town to find you. That's right, John. Keep it up. Go on. Be jealous. Well, I tell you, I can't stand it any longer. <laughs> you can't stand it. Well, neither can I. He could have sent Gordon just as well. But no, you had to go. Well, if that's all you have to talk about, I... I'm not interested and I won't listen any longer. I won't, I can't. Stephen, my friend, I have you. And you shall experience such horrors as you have never dreamed of in your wildest nightmare. How would you like to see your own funeral, huh? How would you like to see me on your grave's edge, hearing the earth fall on your casket? How would you like to feel the cold of your own grave? Tomorrow, around midnight, your muscles will be alive again, but it will be too late. You will be encased in a casket, which I myself picked up, and eight feet of heavy earth above you. And in your friends, you, you will pound and scratch, and you will gasp and suffocate. <laughs> Didn't you tell me once that you liked uh, carnations more than any other flower? Didn't you? I thought so. I shall send you some tomorrow. Look for them on your casket. They will be for me. I, I must hurry now. Perhaps I'll see you still. I'll, I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Pleasant dreams. Morning, Miss Gordon. Good morning, mm -hmm. Dr. Crespi. Dr. Blakeford called. He said he'd get in touch with you later on in the day. Oh, there was a man here from the Benton Parlors. He said you told him to fix up Dr. Ross. I sent him downstairs. How long ago? Oh, about... Fifteen minutes ago. Who 
Who sent you? Dr. Crespi. I am Dr. Crespi. I gave distinct orders not to do anything but to supply the coffin. I'm sorry, sir. I'm a new man on the job. They didn't say anything except to fix him up. Oh, you fool. Keep her shirt on. I ain't done nothing. Oh, you haven't started yet. Well, that's, that's different. It doesn't really make any difference, except that the deceased was unalterably opposed to men of your profession. I didn't call you. I know that. But I want to talk to you. About what? It's about Stephen Ross. What about it? You have the charts. The case is closed. You're mistaken. The case is not closed. Because the most important thing does not appear on the charts. Ross was poisoned, and you can't get away with it. You be careful, Thomas. I know you did it, and I know why you did it. You couldn't explain. Uh. Explain that! Do you? Go on, hit me. I don't care. I still say you poisoned him. And you murdered him! You can't take that out of me! You can't shut me up! You murdered him! Murdered? Poison? What do you know about it? Anybody know! Go ahead and please get me for Sati. Yes, the florist. For Sati? This is Dr. Crespi. Thanks, fine. That is, I want to order some flowers by my colleague, Dr. Ross. Yes. Of course. You can imagine. We've been friends for years. Uh, well, I want the most beautiful floral design that ever came out of your shop. Uh, I don't care anything about the price, just so that it is the last word in flowers. Uh, by the way, his uh, favorite flowers uh, were carnations. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Uh, but you could put some roses in with them. I personally like roses. Now get that. 
on one ribbon uh, have uh, to my valued colleague in sincerest friendship. You got that? And on the other, oh, just Andre, A N D R E. Oh, Gray, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. My beloved brother, be steadfast, unmovable. Come in. That's funny. Thought I heard someone knock. Any pains of death to fall from thee? Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. I'm sorry, but I can't locate Dr. Thomas. Well, I don't know where he is either. No. I think he's at the funeral with Dr. Crespi. All right. I'll call you back. Almighty God, with whom do live the spirits of those who depart hence in the Lord, and with whom the soul everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Have a nice nap. Sorry I had to treat you so rough. You know, if I wouldn't have locked you up today, you would have blurted your ideas all over the place, and it wouldn't have helped you or me or the hospital. And uh, I think I'm going to let you go back to work, but, I, but in the future, Thomas, I wish you would keep your ideas to yourself, very much to yourself.
because the next time you'll have any bad dreams, I'll try the observation ward. Is that clear? I can't get away with it, huh? You can't get away with it. That's what I told him. Count me out. May be true, but you're never going to prove anything on the old man, even if he did poison him. Anyway, no grave robbing for me. It isn't worth it. It won't take long. We can dig him up, cut him open, and if we can't discover any poison, we can have him back in the cemetery within two hours. All right, go ahead and bring him in. I'll help you work on him. I can't do it myself. You know that. Think what it'll mean if we get the goods on Crispy. And he is guilty. He never would have locked me up if he were innocent. If you can't help me, I'm going to spill it to the district attorney. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I still don't believe it. But if it ever gets out, it'll put us all under a cloud of suspicion. Personally, I'd rather be out of it. But if you feel that way about it, all right, I'll go. What time do you want to start? About 10. Are you sure this is it? Yes. Mommy, are we going back to see Daddy? No, dear. Daddy's gone away. We won't see him for some time. Why did he go? Why did he kiss me goodbye? Someday, someday I'll try to explain to you. Dear. Why can't we stay here? I'll tell you later. See, we're, we must get ready. We're going away on a train. We're going to see Grandmother. Gordon, Dr. Crespi. When Mrs. Ross arrives, would you send her immediately to my office? What? No. I'm seeing her off. Keep 
Florida to Florida. What a loss to the medical profession. What do you make of it? He's been dead for a day and a half and rigor mortis hasn't set in yet. Ready for the instrument. Okay. Good thing you called, Clara. I was half asleep. What? You don't see how anyone can sleep in a hospital. Say, that's about all there is to do around here, and that's just sleep. It's the quietest spot in the world. There hasn't been any excitement since the quintuplets. No, there's no one here except the old man. And he's expecting Mrs. Rawls. You know, her husband was buried this afternoon. There's a nice picture of him on page three in the news. He's nice looking. I could have gone for him. Right but that's the way it is, dearie. You never do get near the good ones. I don't know why, but I've got the funniest feeling. No, oh, but nothing ever happens around here. So he's come back to haunt me. They didn't like the coffin that I picked out for you, huh? Well, let me tell you. As a ghost, you're just as hideous as the rotten carcass of yours out of fell on Sunday. Sorry, finish. I'm through. The great Dr. Crespi. Don't! <gasps> Dr. Crespi! Take your family home, eh? Sure, Doc. Take my wife and the five kids. I got him with Raphael, Mariana, Rosina, Mariucci, and Angelina. Well, uh, if you need us again, just call us. Then that was so much time, Doc. You know, get away a little bit. Good afternoon, Doctor. Hello. Anything new? Mrs. Arnold is waiting for you. Find your mail on your desk. Thanks. Sorry, the boss is tied up. A new case? Mm, not quite. 
Here, who's in there? Mrs. Orman. Oh, that's different. Uh, doing anything tonight? Oh, Dr. Thomas.